Welcome to LOA Today. I'm Walt Thiessen. With me today is abundance teacher and money coach, Jody Lynn Craven. This is your daily dose of happy. We are so happy you decided to join us today. We are hopeful that we're going to have a guest join us sometime during the show today, but uh, she's having trouble connecting. We're not really sure how it's all gonna play out, so we figured we'd just get started and uh, we'll, we'll talk amongst ourselves and if our guests can't make it today, we'll bring her back another day. But Jody Lynn, it's been a while since we talked anyway. I mean, yeah. like, we, want, we have guests on, right? But we don't get to do a whole lot of one-on-one, so this, yeah. this is a good thing to do to start this Yeah, one. I always yeah. have fun just chatting with you all. Oh, me too, I love it. So and now, um, there were, there were a couple of weeks back there where you couldn't be on the show because you were dealing with the planting there on the farm. So that's, we were just chatting before that that's now done. So you're, you, yes. like you were saying to me before, you're in the weeding of the garden stage, which I totally understand because I, <laughs> I deal with gardeners all the time. Um, but uh, th this is kind of an unusual part of the year for the farmer, isn't it? Because you're just kind of waiting to see what happens with the crops. Yes. How it grows if we get the sunshine and the rain and hope there's no hail or you right. know things like that we got a badger that moved in you got a badger oh yeah. my goodness Ooh. oh man we had a lot of 13 line ground squirrels which i had never seen in my life they moved in a couple of years ago and have been rapidly expanding their family and um, at your expense mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. okay. yes yes they like to chew on you know just like one cum cucumber here one cucumber there mm. cutest things ever just so adorable but very destructive mm. and you know we've we haven't done anything to get rid of them because they're so cute and it's hard <laughs> I mean, my husband, he's this farmer dude, right? And he's so like strong, and tough and, and, and all of those things. And then we had um, this bird. Uh, oh man, what does he call her? I can't remember. They're, they have really, really long legs mm. <laughs> and they're really tiny. I can't mm. remember what they're called, but they, uh, the mama bird had laid eggs and we thought it was just off of our driveway and she would come out and they would like squawk at the car or if we'd walk by to go lock the gate or, you know, whatever. Right. And then they do this thing where their defense mechanism is they'll go to the opposite side of the nest and then they'll pretend like they have a broken wing and like that they're dying. Wow. <laughs> so, Interesting. Like, they'll come towards <laughs> them and away from the nest. It's hilarious to watch these silly things. Um, but one day we discovered the nest was actually on the driveway. Oh, jeez. So we were like, oh no. So we had to get a bunch of soil dropped off. So my husband's like talking to the driver, like, be, be careful on the corner. Careful, right, right. The eggs. <laughs> <laughs> so we weren't, we weren't able to take care of these 13 line ground squirrels because I, it, my heart, his heart, yeah. you know, we didn't want to trap them and you know, what do you do? So we've been kind of like just waiting. And I guess badgers are really in tune and will move in to an area that has a lot of uh, ground squirrels or oh, things okay. of that nature and they will eat them all. So we had a badger move into the garden and take care of most of them. Um, it was pretty quiet here for the last week since the badger arrived. I think the badger has gone now, um, but a few of them have turned back up. So he uh -huh. didn't decimate the entire population, but yeah, so that was interesting. It's always this learning curve like life, but the garden teaches me a lot about patience and about abundance and flow mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. all of these things. I'm learning a lot. Isn't it amazing about. how life just kind of finds all these interesting and sometimes traumatic ways to teach us <laughs> stuff. <laughs> Yes. We were talking about this before. I, the traumas yes. we're, we're faced with in a life that are like presented to us. Yes. <laughs> I mean, they're, well, they're traumatic. For, we call it trauma for a reason. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, those badgers, they are destructive. And mm. um, I wouldn't want to be in a room with one of them. Their claws are like this big. They're, yeah, they're fierce <laughs> creatures. They yes. really are. Yeah. yeah. So... I, I don't think he's there anymore. I think he's gone or her, whatever. So, thank was. you, Mr. and Mrs. Badger. We appreciate yeah. you helping to resolve the issue, but 
yeah. have a nice trip. <laughs> yeah, please leave. Uh, just keep on moving. Please don't go to the greenhouse. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, God, yes. Because <laughs> uh, their holes are huge. So yeah. it, it's been it's been interesting. But, yes, all the planting is done, and now we're I, in the hole. That, that raises a question. I'm, I've always been curious about this because I know nothing about greenhouse growing. Yeah. Does a greenhouse keep creatures out? No. It doesn't. No. If no. anything, it calls more of them in. Like it does. every no. day when the doors are open, because you have to open the greenhouse or else it gets too mm -hmm. hot. And mm -hmm. there's something going on with the sun that I don't quite understand that I've never seen because we accidentally left the greenhouse closed one day. Nate thought I opened it. I thought he opened it. Mm -hmm. Long story short, no one opened it. But mm -hmm. it was only... 23 degrees Celsius. So it wasn't, I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit, but it wasn't that hot. Mm -hmm. Not like it was not plus 30, like heat wave by any means. It was kind of a normal ish kind of day for spring. Mm -hmm. And um, we left the door closed. And when we went in there, a lot of things were dead, unfortunately, mm -hmm. or dying or like drooped over, super sad. Um, but it, uh, one of the plastic trays that we have in there uh, for the plants, it melted. Wow. So, yeah. So, it, so, so we have to make sure that we open the doors in the morning. Now I have an alarm on my phone and yeah. I in the morning. I'm like, Hey, did you do it? Or do I need to go do it before my meetings or whatever? But we always have like a Robin that gets in there and then we got to figure out how to get it out. Yesterday we had a dragonfly that was like bouncing on the side of the plastic, trying to get his way up. So I had to yeah. somehow catch him by the wings carefully. And you, know, you go this way. This <laughs> you way. Go Next thing over here. Right? Yeah. <laughs> the 13 line ground squirrels, they had babies in there. We saw her moving her babies when we went in there one day. Cute. Super cute. Um, mice. They like to go in there because it's nice mm. and warm and, yeah, sure. you know, there's different stacks of things that they can mm -hmm. cuddle up to or whatever. Um, we've had deer in there. In there? Really? Uh -huh. wow. I don't know how they got in. I don't know how they got out, but we had deer tracks wow. in the, the the greenhouse. Like, we must have left the door open and they yeah. tootled on through. But, no, it doesn't stop anything. Apparently, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, that's an education right there. <laughs> yeah. I thought Actually, it would too. <laughs> apparently. Yeah. But uh, I guess not. I, I have a little experiment of my own going on because um, I'm like you living on the farm. I, I live in an apartment and there's not a whole lot of growing room outside here. Um, but I had a guest on, when was it? I'm going to say about a month ago, maybe not quite a month ago, um, selling me on the idea of growing um, seedlings because of the high nutritional value of seedlings. Mm -hmm. So I've been collecting materials to do all that. I finally got, I, I ordered the trays for whatever reason have taken forever to come, but they finally arrived today. So I have to go out and get some organic soil and I'm going to start doing it in my basement mm -hmm. because I don't have any place outside, but I have a little half basement, you know, so I'll just do it inside. And I got lighting and all this other kind of stuff. So I can, huh? I got, I got, um, you know, plug in meters. So it'll, it'll turn the lights on for 18 hours and turn them off for so six hours or whatever it is, eight hours. And I've got all the stuff together. I got the seeds. I got to start germinating seeds and so forth. So I'm going to start trying this thing to see, can I be an indoor gardener? Yeah. <laughs> That's exciting. I think that, I, I, I don't know. I think that more people should start getting into this. This is a question that I, you know, I've asked myself a lot over the last five years is why do I live the way that I do? Mm -hmm. And why do we as a society live the way that we do? And a lot of it came back to convenience. You know, no, we're sure. so busy doing all of these other things that we perceive as important. And we don't garden anymore. A lot of people don't have even backyards mm -hmm. or, you know, they, I know people who have turfed over their backyard because they don't want to have to mow it and do mm -hmm. things. And I think we're losing a lot of, valuable things by not doing some of these things, growing our own food, yeah, knowing sure. where it comes from, you know, just even playing in the dirt, the, the health benefits from grounding being, you know, one with the dirt and, and the consciousness that plants have, it's, it's phenomenal. Plus if I can actually pull this off, I can prove that you don't have to have earth in order to 
actually do some gardening. You can actually, exactly. if you've got any kind of indoor space at all, yeah, you can do something. Yep. Absolutely. Which means for, for someone like me who's in the dark tundra in the winter, <laughs> <laughs> that we can have fresh vegetables all the time. And with yeah. prices skyrocketing, I'm, I'm sure it's the same in the United States, but sure. inflation is, is, is outrageous. And the prices mm. for food is, is really becoming ludicrous. So if we can grow some of our own stuff, it's healthier for you and helps your pocketbook. Why not? I got a text from my ex just yesterday because she had gone to our favorite farm to get the corn. She says, have you seen the price of the corn? Right. <laughs> oh man. What, what is it for corn there? <laughs> it's a buck 49 a year. I think it was, but uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, that's cheap in comparison. Like it's, I don't know what's going on here, but it's, it's not. Well, the good. Canadian dollar and the U.S. dollar aren't, aren't, aren't parity anyway. So no. Yeah. No. So, so you translate that to the Canadian dollar. You're probably talking like two and a quarter or something like that. Yeah. 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 It's just crazy. Yeah. It's an interesting time we live in. But <laughs> yes. then again, this is, I, I think back to what happened during the pandemic, right? So everybody's in lockdown all around the world for the first time in their lives, never having experienced it before, not knowing what to do now, knowing how long it's going to last. And look at all the creativity that came out of it. Yeah. People finding ways to celebrate birthdays and, you know, graduations and keep the kids entertained by building forts outside and, you know, yeah. all this stuff. They, they just, people got really, really creative. So yeah, we're dealing with a time of inflation, I'm looking forward to seeing what the, the creativity coming out of it is going to be. Because you know, this is an example of it, right? You, you create a little garden space in your basement. So there's an example of something you can do to kind of offset the inflation. There are going to be other ideas as well. Absolutely. Yeah. In times of need, um, people step up. They get creative. They yeah. get creative. Absolutely. And, yeah. and humans are really creative. Yeah. Absolutely. I think we could solve all the problems of the world if just we were in a position to be creative. And that was loud. <laughs> yeah, but never. it's true, though. Uh, I think a lot of the time people don't feel like they're in a position where they can feel creative. That, that's one of the ways of describing the, the complaints that people have about their careers, about their jobs. They feel yeah. like they're they're limited. That they're, they're tied into something. You know, they're restricted. It's almost like they're working with two hands tied behind their back or something. Absolutely. Um, you know, so when you feel like that, it, and feeling is the secret, right? So when you're feeling like you're trapped, you're going to act like you're trapped. Yeah. And then you're, you're going to go stir crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. And then you're going to complain, "Well, I can't be creative." <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Creativity is huge, and. You even think about what it does for your soul when you mm -hmm. allow yourself to be creative without that judgment of like, it doesn't matter what you create or what you try and if it works or doesn't, or, you know, whatever you suspend that judgment and it's so good for the soul. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The other thing about creativity is not only is it good for the soul, it's good for conscious expression. I yeah. think there's something about trying to get creative about anything that it well first of all it shifts mindset right because mm -hmm. that's part of the process if you're going to create something you have to change your mindset in some way and not only does it shift mindset it usually shifts for the better unless you're creating something that's really nasty it's going to shift you for the better yeah now there are people who do that you know there yeah. are putins in this world but most people aren't putins most people are much nicer than that much kinder than that you know, so most people are going to be creating something that, that feels good and, and is helpful and so forth. Yep. And when you're when you're in that creative mindset, you are in a mindset of change. Yeah. So, yeah, I get it. I think we both get it when you're dealing with a career or whatever, where you're feeling trapped, you're feeling restricted. It does kind of close things off. But there's also the reminder that if we can find a way outside of work even to just create something anything mm -hmm. the littlest thing we're going to start shifting not only our mindset but when well we know what happens when you shift your mindset you also shift, shift your environment because your environment has to match the new mindset yeah the reality changes yeah the reality does change yeah so Absolutely. i'm going to start changing my reality i'm going to start growing some seedlings <laughs>
That's right. I know for me, um, you know, I think I've talked about this before with you that I've spent a long time, well, at least the last year, really studying what's special about the garden and why my mm. husband loves it so much. Mm. I did not. <laughs> you're all. developing a new love. Is that what you're saying? I am developing a new love. I'm okay. finding creative ways to love the plants and love okay. all of those things. And I've shifted so much, but, um, that, and in that same vein, I, I do love it. I mean, I, there's certain things that I don't love, like being outside until 11 PM at night, you know, mm. having to work like that. It was kind of crazy there for a while. It's better now. Um, yeah. but I love being out in the sun. I, I love that. I have all of these, like I have thousands of babies. You know, mm. I've, I've wanted a family for so long, and now I've started to look at all of these plants as my babies. Okay. So then I say, like, my thousand babies that right, I right. have out in the garden, but just watching something seemingly come out of nothing. Like, you put this mm. seed in the soil, and, you know, like, it, it's a seed. Like, it's it's just a little piece of material or whatever. Right. You put it in there, right? And, like, oh, big deal, right? And then watching it grow the stem and like blossom it's really truly magical yeah. and and really telling of of what can be created in our own worlds out of something that seems like nothing it is well any kind of growth is, is fascinating to watch but you're mm -hmm. right when it's a seedling and it's just it's just kind of starting from scratch that's probably the most fascinating because it does seem like it's coming from nothing yeah. It's not coming from nothing. It actually is, but it seems like no. it. But it seems like it. Like even when yeah. you, we put some seeds in the fridge um, in between like two pieces of paper towel that were wet. Mm -hmm. um, I think they were sprouts of some mm -hmm. kind. Mm -hmm. And that's how you're supposed to germinate them or something. I don't know. Um, you're supposed to help the seed along. So that's what we did. But like watching it, like, oh, we forgot them in the fridge. <laughs> <laughs> then we look at the package. Oh my gosh, we have actual sprouts. On. <laughs> like we didn't give them anything except for water. Like paper towel does yeah. nothing for them. Yeah. But wow, just so incredible how it seems like it was nothing, and then all of a sudden it's becoming something. I think the uh, the initial um, germination stage is also fascinating. Um, the, the particular seeding seedlings that I'm going to be experimenting with first, you you germinate them in water. Yeah. And so um, I'll get a jar and I'll, I'll put a bunch of them into the water. And according to the instructions that I'm following, like the next day, you'll see each of the little seeds has, has pushed out a little little tendril, so to speak. Yeah. I know that's ready to go into the soil. I think oh, that's pretty darn cool. I mean, <laughs> right? That's, that's a dramatic shift, right? You know, before they were like they, they were just seeds, and now all of a sudden they've opened up and they've got the stuff coming out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can see it. You can. It's see not buried it. in the soil. You know, it's okay. it's right there in the water. Yeah. And then it'll turn into something like mm. something that is nutritious for you and yeah. helps your body and does all of these things. It's quite fascinating how it just happens so naturally. Mm. Uh, it's, it's a question or like a thought that I've, I've been frequently thinking of how nature is in flow and what that looks like. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, put the, our human population next to it and how out of flow it feels sometimes, mm -hmm. um, you know, we like, we work so hard. We got to go and do this and go and do that. And then you look at nature and you look at like the most profound plants or animals or whatever, and they just kind of just appear or they, you know, they come out of seemingly nothing. And then all of a sudden they're growing and mm -hmm. it just happens so naturally, this beautiful flow of, yeah. of life and this life force that is all around us. Yeah, no doubt about it. Mm -hmm. I was also um, thinking about the, the instructions that, cause the, uh, the guy who was on my program is the one I've, I've been texting back and forth, you know, getting ideas from him. What, what should I grow? Where should I, you know, how should I go about doing it? And he sent me yeah. an article. And so I look at the article and learning all this stuff. Um, one of the things that I asked him was, well, okay, you, this partic these particular seedlings, you, you plant them in a uh, in trays that have holes in them so that they can drain. Um, and I asked him, well, what do you do with the soil when it's done? Because one of the points of all this is that you're, you're basically getting nutrients, among other things, from the soil for the plants. So you, you, you 
you've grown your first seedlings, then what? And he says, well, you, you basically dump that soil and get some more organic soil. So I'm thinking, okay, well, we don't have a whole lot of outside here, but we got like a little bit of you know, apartment landscaping. So I'll, I'll put the soil out there. And it occurred to me, well, we have all these issues with soil these days, right? Soil depletion and so forth. I'm going to be putting soil out that's not completely depleted. It's got, still got some nutrients in it. I'm going to be adding it to soil that is depleted. I'm actually helping the soil outside my apartment complex. Yes. So it's like a side benefit of the whole thing. Yeah. I, I, I never thought about that when I started the idea of, you know, doing these seedlings, but all of a sudden now I'm helping to contribute to replenishing soil. Yeah, absolutely. Ooh, I wonder what will grow there. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I'll have to pay attention to that. I'll ask my cat to, to keep an eye on it because he's getting used to being out in that area. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's cute. Well, my cat, <clears throat> I mean, everybody who's, who's listened for a while knows that I was recently divorced and um, the place we used to live in when we were still together, we had two cats and this cat was the neighborhood ambassador. He got to know everybody, you know, so literally everybody in the complex knew Joy and they would, he, whenever they saw him, he'd have to run up and get cats from them. And I mean, like, he was like, Aww. he knew everybody. And then Louise and I break up and I moved to this new complex. And he doesn't know it. And he doesn't know the people. And he's afraid to go outside. Aww. Because, you know, he doesn't know anything. It's, it's all completely foreign to him. So we've been <laughs> gradually acclimating him to it. That's what I was thinking about when I mentioned that he would be, uh, you know, um, checking out what's growing in the soil. Because among other things, that, that is what he would be doing. Um, but he would also be, he'd be kind of like taking the opportunity to do the same kind of thing. He's basically... He, he's reseeding a new territory with his own attention. That's what mm -hmm. I'm trying to get at. You know, so yeah. like we, we know that all of us know that, well, any of us who know about um, how you know, um, physics works, uh, that your attention can impact and affect electrons, molecules. It can affect all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, and so I'm thinking, well, what happens when you have a cat giving his attention? to an area that has new soil in it? And the answer is, I don't know, but something's going to come out of that. Yeah. Absolutely. Something's going to happen. That's um, a fascinating topic of the, when you give attention to something, how it changes the, mm. the split test model. I'm sure that we've talked about that before. Mm -hmm. You know, when you observe something, that conscious observance changes the pattern of yes. of it and there's many examples of all of this the most fascinating part for me is how science many scientists still uh, resist it really like, oh yeah yeah well i mean they they understand the new the new physics so to speak you know they understand now it's different from wave physics but they don't like some of the implications that are involved in it like this idea that you that human observation will affect what the physical properties are or what what those physical um, pieces do that yeah. there, there are a number of scientists who just resist that there there are scientists who are trying to come up with alternative theories to explain the, the heisenberg principle they're, 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 they're literally trying to change the whole thing around really so that, so that it doesn't come out with this woo-woo spiritual side to it. <laughs> Good luck. Yeah, that's what I say. Good luck. It's kind of like trying to roll a rock uphill, and it's a very large rock at that. But and what's the point? I mean, I'm I am all for asking questions and testing theories, and not just going with the grain. I'm oh, me too. Design. Um, but, but I think the, the point. But there is a point. I think the point is that not everybody's going to be on board. Yeah. People are going to resist. That That's one of the things we humans do very well. We resist. Yeah. Usually to our own you know, discomfort, but <laughs> yes. to, to our own you know, dismay, perhaps. <laughs> yes. But yeah, we resist. We are resisting machines. And in the yeah. process of doing those resistances, we learn things. So even if there are people who are you know, resisting the new physics, as I'm calling it, um, it's for a reason. They may yeah. not even know what the reason is, but it's for a reason. And it's going to it's going to lead to something cool. Yeah. I mean, we have a tendency to think that just because they're focusing on on like old ideas that no longer work, 
that it's going to be a bad result, but that's actually not necessarily true. No, there's more than one possibility that exists. It's, it's one of the hardest things to deal with where this the spiritual side is concerned because it's the recognition that even things I really, really, really detest can produce really good results, mm -hmm. which is quite uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> It, it is. very uncomfortable. <laughs> oh, it's extremely uncomfortable. You know? Yeah. So we, we look around at the world and we see how many how many times do you hear people complaining about, you know, the world is falling apart, you know, everything's going to hell, hell in a handbasket and, you know, the, the climate is falling apart and politics is crazy and, you know, the, they're just complaining about all this stuff. Yeah. How few of them do you think actually grasp that all this craziness is actually going to lead to some pretty cool stuff. I hope that there is more than I think there is. <laughs> <laughs> Very diplomatically stated, I have to admit. <laughs> well, I think that people get caught up in the, the fear of it all, of, yeah. of, uh, of what is possible. Actually, I was channeling about this the other week because, you know, law of attraction, you know, what you focus on expands and, you know, you're calling these things to you. So I don't want to focus on the, the <laughs> negative stuff. And I've channeled some pretty wild things and I see some pretty wild things happening in our world today. And I, you know, I don't want to get stuck there. I would like to have the perspective that you were just talking about. And that's what the channel brought up was, there, that is one way. The idea in your mind is one way that this could all play out, but billions of possibilities exist. So stop limiting yourself to that one way. And also it brought forward this realization that when I look back on my life, I could have never imagined being here in this seat talking to you today. Mm. That you know, like all of the things in my life that I experience or have experienced or have in my life today, they're beyond my imagination. I wouldn't have said all of these things will happen because I, I couldn't have conceptualized it in any way, shape or form. And that was the point that the channel was making or my guides were making is that what will happen is something that you can't even conceive or perceive at this time yet. We haven't so. actually talked about your channeling lately. We have, we have had you channel on the show and it was cool. In fact, we had one time when, when you and David were, were both channeling at the same time. That was really cool. Yeah. Um, but one thing I, I, it just kind of occurred to me as a question, when you channeled with yourself, I mean, when you were channeling with us, you were basically just talking to us. Okay. But when you channel with yourself, what do you do? You like read into a recorder or do you write stuff down? How, how do you actually, you know, take the information so you can look at it later on? Uh, I, I write it all down as fast as I can. Sometimes okay. I don't even get a chance to write it down. It's more of like a conversation with somebody else. You know, okay. I, I ask questions. They tell me the answers. Sometimes I get, you know, my hand going fast enough that I can write down. Like you could, you could never read it. I can read, <laughs> it. read it. But yeah, that's usually how I do it is when I'm just channeling on my own. Um, I'll just write the information in my notebook or journal or something like that. Okay. So now when you're, whenever you're channeling, I mean, you're the one who's putting the words together, right? Yeah. You're basically, in theory, you're doing it based on uh, input that you're getting. But there's a part of you that knows that you're the one who's doing this writing. So yeah. do you ever write something down and look at it and say, well, that can't be right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. I now because my channel is more fluid because I've had lots of practice, they sound completely different and they resonate differently than I do. So it's so apparent that it's not me that okay. that is helpful for my conscious brain because they use words that I don't use in my everyday language. Mm, like right, right. A, a quick example would be like precisely. Wow. They will say that it's like a, an, not an old style English, but like an elevated, mm -hmm. you know, language that they use. It's more perfected, whereas mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just a farm girl. So <laughs> I don't, I don't the perfect word. It's precise. It's a precise yeah. use. Of it's language. very precise. And mm -hmm. they're, they'll give me words. This is the craziest thing about channeling. Um, my, one of my best friends, Jackie, she just thinks it's a hoot because <laughs> She'll ask me questions when I'm channeling and I'll ask them and I'll be like, okay, well, uh, 
they're saying this word and I, I don't think it applies and I'll like <laughs> spit out the word. And she's like, do you know what that means, Jody? And she's very intelligent, like successful business owner. Like I really look up to this woman. She's done a lot in her life and she's very intelligent. And I'm like, no, I have no idea what that means. And she's like, oh, okay. It means, and she'll give me the definition <laughs> of what the word means and be like, that is precisely what we're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Perfect word. And it's not in my vocabulary. Like, vocabulary. I've never even heard of the word. Like, just, I'm like, I don't know what this word is. And I'll like try and sound it out because they'll, they'll say it or they'll show me the word or whatever. But I'm like, well, I don't know what that word is. I've never, I've never even heard of it before. <laughs> <laughs> so that That's actually funny. makes my conscious brain go, ah, it's not you. Like you're not just making this shit up. <laughs> But, but when you first started, though, because that's what I would think would happen, that when you're first you know, kind of developing the talent, so to speak, you've got to have more of those moments where you say, that can't be right. And, and like, how, yes. did, how did you handle those? Did, did you literally just reject it and move on? Um, yeah, I, I would talk them out with other people that I knew wouldn't oh. judge me. So okay. this one concept for abundance um, or abundance code that they, they gave me is – is like where we're going in life, where we will end up, if you will, new earth is, is a place where everybody has what they need and are able to manifest what they desire very easily. And it's more about the expression of life and, and living that expression. It's shifted away from the society we have of go, go, go and do and achieve and, and whatever. It's more of a, a, a deeper feeling about of fulfillment and life. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I felt that drop in and I understood the concept on this like airy fairy level, mm -hmm. but not how we get from here. <laughs> how do you get from A to B? <laughs> yeah, I don't I I have no idea. And I I it sounded so wild the concept back then when I first cha channeled it that I was like, so Jackie, what what do you think about this? And, and Jackie's like, hmm, that kind of sounds like communism or socialism. <laughs> I was like Shit, I don't know if I like that. Like no, that's I, not calculated to feel good, no. Yeah, no, I don't I don't it doesn't feel like that to me. And then but I mean it it enticed me to learn more about what those words actually mean because you know I've heard of them, you know, social class, whatever in high school, junior high school, whenever they teach you that stuff, but like in one ear out the other, I just I don't really understand what that meant or I didn't at that point in time really understand what she was talking about. But I'm like, no, no, it's not really that that is definitely not what I'm talking about. This is the feeling. So trying to explain the words that they've given me has, has definitely got me in the beginning. And then mm. the less I try and actually explain them and I just say them, the more people just get it. <laughs> Yeah, well, that makes sense. That does make sense. Yeah. And this all, I think the reason I asked about this, I'm reminded of a film. I, I can't even remember what the film was. I've been sitting here trying to you know, rack my brains. What is the film? But there was a film where there was a character who, I don't think they were channeling. They were they were doing something like, I don't know, decoding a code or something. Yeah. They, they, they were, they were un, unraveling some sort of a puzzle and writing down what the result would be. You know, and so you actually watch the character and, and, and the character's writing. But then, and they're vocalizing it. It's just hanging. Bah, 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 bah. Well, that can't be right. And, they, and, and it actually, in the context of the show, it is right. I mean, it, it's actually true what they're saying, but they don't believe it. So yeah. they, they scratch it out and start all over again. And it, it's like a perfect metaphor for what it feels like when you're getting information that doesn't make any sense to you. Yes. That's actually valid information. Yes. Yeah. It definitely happened a lot when I was channeling the book. Like, I don't know how that's applicable in our life. Like, I just mm. couldn't comprehend what that meant in, mm. in the way that I had received it. So I just... I, instead of scratching it out, I just left it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's probably a better move. <laughs> yeah, and just was like, okay, I'm puzzled. <laughs> I don't, just put a big I question mark, know. come back to it later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, and, and you know what? It's so funny because I was, um, I guess, had like low self-esteem or 
just didn't believe in myself well enough um, mm-hmm. when I first started doing this. And that still comes up today, um, but just different degrees of it. But it was so much so in the very beginning that I would kind of like sneak around the philosophies that I was given. And I'd be like, I'd go do field training in my brokerage. And I'd be like, we, we'd go in the same vehicle together to somebody's house. We would do an appointment and, you know, mm-hmm. whatever. Right. And I'd be like sitting in the vehicle and I'd be like, so what do you think of this concept? <laughs> <laughs> and the person was like, huh, that's really interesting. Can you tell me more? And I would spit out more information, but I wouldn't tell them where I got it from or right. what I was thinking about or the context. And they'd be like, wow, that's profound or that's <laughs> beautiful. And I'd be like, all right, check. I'm not crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. The sanity okay. check. <laughs> yeah. It, it makes sense to them. Like a, an, an average ordinary individual is getting it. What's, what's behind it. And they're like, wow, that's really amazing. Okay. Check. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Okay, that's good. But I wouldn't tell anybody really where it had come from. I would just yeah, be like feeling them out, you know, right. what do you think about this? Or what do you think about this idea? <laughs> just very loose and, you know, not, not attached to it in any way. Right. Well, you're reminding me of the first time that I, I tried, I guess you could call it channeling here on the show. Yeah. Because most of the time, I mean, you know this, most of the time I have no trouble coming up with the next question to ask or the next, you know, the next theme, the next thread to go on and so forth. Um, so it, it's almost never an issue. But there was one show that, that finally came along and it came along after we'd had some conversations about channeling and about you know, alternative ways of understanding the spirit and source energy and so forth. So I'd had some grounding in it. Uh, and I knew that there was the possibility that everybody can channel. But I hadn't really bought into the idea that I could do it. Mm-hmm. But anyway, this episode comes along, and about three quarters of the way through the episode, I had a rare moment where I couldn't think of what to say next. And I knew that everybody, they would like, I think I had two people in the room at that, and they're both waiting for me to say something. They're waiting for me to take it to the next level, and I have no idea where to go. I, I, I just ran out of ideas. And so, as a like a last gasp, desperate resort. <laughs> I opened my mouth just to see if anything would come out. <laughs> and and some words started to stumble out, and then I I, I kind of got a flow going, so I went with it some more. And I had no idea what I was saying. I had no idea where I was going with it. I didn't even know if it made any sense. But I went on for about a minute like that, and then my guests or co-hosts or whoever they were, were responding and they were saying, yes, yes, yes. And I was like, what did I just say? (laughs) (laughs) What was the question? (laughs) I I actually had, I almost never play back episodes that I've already recorded. That was one of the times I actually had to play it back to see if what I had said made sense. Yeah. And I played it back and not only did it make sense, but they were right, it was actually profound. I said, how did I get that? (laughs) You were channeling. You were connecting Apparently with. I was. You know, the one thing that I did learn out of it is I can't tell the difference between channeling and me talking, other than my brain seems to be engaged in one and not in the other. That's the only difference I can tell. Yeah. That's usually it. Is that when it? You let your brain, like the, the conscious part of your brain, the one that like questions everything and is mm. like only. It's only right when you know the answer. So you studied something or, or whatever, when you, when you surrender that and let that step aside and allow whatever is coming through to actually come through, that's, that's it. And I have to admit, I have gotten a little bit better at it to the point where I can often follow this thought, this train of thought that's coming through and be kind of curious to say, okay, I wonder where this is going. And then listen to it as I'm saying it and so forth. Like I, I had an incident with that actually yesterday. Joel Elston yeah. did the show with me yesterday. We were talking about uh, the subconscious mind and uh, body language and how the two, he has this whole interesting theory that he was telling us about. And at one point I had one of those moments where I couldn't think what to say. And I came out with, a, uh, I started with a phrase that I often use, but I, to be, Honestly, I sometimes use it when I don't really know what to say. It's kind of like my little bridge into, okay, channeling spirit. This is your opportunity to step in. This is my way of cueing you. And and the phrase is, you know, that makes me think about, and then I have no idea what I'm going to say after that. Because it really didn't make me think of anything at all. (laughs) 
<laughs> wow. For me, that feels gutsy. That, <laughs> hey, that makes me think about, and then like, I would be wait, like, wait oh, to see what comes out of the mouth. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, yeah. I, it's interesting because there's some things that I can do that with. And then, you know, on forums like this, I would feel, I, I have felt in the past. I mean, being on your show has been, um, a great teacher for me to trust mm. that flow and allow what's coming through to come me through. Too. You yeah. know, you always ask me at the end of the show to give like my two cents. And right. that's when I just really like lean back and let it come through. And it's uh, usually pretty profound. It is. I can I, attest to that. Yeah. Sometimes I have no idea. Like I've just been like <laughs> blown away or like just, you know, like engaged in the conversation and actively listening. And then I'm like, Oh, what am I going to say to this? And I just try and really let it go and let whatever's coming through, come through. And it's, it's been much better, but doing that on like that demand, it's like, good. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to be, I, I don't have to do this quite so much with you because I've heard you, you always come up with these great things. So your ability to channel is excellent. Um, <laughs> but with some of my other co-hosts who don't have quite the same level, what I have learned how to do is when, when I'm going to ask them to give me a, a summary, I will find a way to stretch the request out to about two or three sentences. Figuring if I can do that, that gives them two or three sentences to think about what it is they want to say. Yes. Yeah, it gives them that time to process. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And usually they're able to, which is yeah. cool. You know. Absolutely. Well, that plus I also keep it really simple. What's the one thing that you, I mean, all you have to do is come up with one, right? Yeah, yeah. If you were listening at all, you should be able to come up with one. I think. Yeah. Hopefully. See, here I'm giving the audience all my, my secrets about how I do the show. <laughs> I think I think it's lovely because I think, you know, when when somebody comes onto a podcast or people are listening to a podcast or whatever, they just they get this feeling of and I, I have looked at you like this and still continue to, but like put you up on a pedestal like, wow, I'm blown away <laughs> by how well you do this and how you come up with questions like it still blows me away where I'm like. I don't know where to take this conversation next. Like I have full faith and trust in you, Walt, that you <laughs> will figure it out and lead us in whatever direction we're going in next. But a lot of times I'm like stumped, especially if they're a difficult guest. Yeah. We've had a yeah. few of those. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Or just not a, a seasoned talker that right. like you're kind of like pulling teeth. We've had yes. a few different ones of that where you're like trying to draw the information mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're just yes. not going for yes. it. Not there. Nope. Uh, <laughs> Lights so we, are on, but nothing's coming out. <laughs> yeah. But it's, it's great to see the other side of how you've maneuvered these things and it. You know, I, I have learned a lot by you sharing these secrets with me um, after the show, before the show, and now during the show. So I think it's <laughs> valuable information and insight. Well, well, now you know I'm a fraud because I mean, half the time I don't even know. Not half the time. No. Sometimes when I don't know what I'm going to say, so I just hope something comes out. <laughs> no, you're just naturally <laughs> gifted at carrying a conversation and moving it with the flow of, you know, the intention of, of the the entire show. I guess. I guess that's what I, I should take credit, right? I, I should express yeah. appreciation. So I thank you for that. Yes, I, I, I accept that that wonderful gift. Yeah, in, I would say you're authentic. I bet you hanging out with you in person is just like this. We would have a blast. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, I pretty much behave in person. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> it's much more fun. Yeah. It is. Totally. I, that, that's the whole point of doing this for me yeah. anyway. I think it is for listeners too. But for me, it's, this is fun. Yeah. Life is fun. Let's have some fun. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's one of the highlights of my week. That's why, you know, I've been coming back for a year now. Which I love. Yeah. yeah. By the, yeah. That's right. Happy anniversary because it was about, uh, it was a, a year ago, April, I think it was. That, I that think June. so. Yeah. Yeah. That, so cool. That's love crazy. That. I love it. One of the other things too that it occurs to me is that we have, um, we, we've had a lot of different kinds of guests. I mean, you just mentioned that we had guests that were kind of troublesome. We've also had guests that were really, really interesting and they engaged us, made us think about things and so forth. And and you've given you you've been given the opportunity to experience what I've been experiencing for like the last 10 years. All these really, really cool perspectives coming yeah. in, feeding stuff. You know, it, it, it's it's not just an energy exchange, although it is. Yeah. It, it's not just an energy feeding, although it is. 
it's an intellectual treat. It's like, yes. you know, here's what I can like sink my mental teeth into next and turn it into a meal. Yeah. That's what happens with each of these episodes. Oh, yeah. You just go on this journey that, you know, opens you up and inspires you to perhaps go in a different direction with like the seedlings, for example, mm-hmm. or, you know, just different things. I never would have imagined that we would cover so many different topics on a yeah. Law of Attraction podcast. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. It is. And it's, it's enticing, too. I, I guess know. the reason I, I bring all that up is I was mentioning earlier, I don't really understand my own channeling. I don't really, I mean, you, you you pointed out quite rightfully, I think that I was channeling when I did that. But I'm mentioning all these other things because you know what? They're all forms of channeling. Mm-hmm. You know, when you're, when you're engaging with a cool guest, that really is a form of channeling. When you're yeah. trying to pull information out of the guest, that's a form of channeling. It's all mm-hmm. channeling, isn't it? I, I think so. It's all that connecting with that other side, the spiritual side that we are all one with, the, the mm-hmm. vault of knowledge that ever has been and ever will be, we have access to it. So it's just tapping into that frequency or light, whatever you want to call it, and extracting the information and bringing it into this now moment. So this becomes a way that I can actually say to myself, all right, now I get, at least to some degree, I understand how I'm actually channeling. Yeah. Because I'm channeling as, for me, the channeling is part of my own self-education. Yep. It's, it's part of my own, it was well, part of how I run the podcast, but it's also how I interact with guests, how I interact with co-hosts, that it, it's all part of that channeling process. Yeah. And when I look at it that way, that starts to make some sense because we started off the show talking about creativity. That's really creativity. Yeah. Because creativity, creativity is kind of, I don't want to say randomly, but selectively, let's say it that way, selectively deciding to go here or to go there. To, to think about this, to focus on that, to try to invent this, to try to solve that. That's creativity. Yeah. And that's what you do when you do a show like this. That's what we do when you, that's what you, that's really what channeling is part of it. I mean, when, when you're receiving this information, you are in a creative mode because you're among other things, this is actually the minimal part of it. You're trying to take this information and creatively turn it into the English language. Yes. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, Everything you're saying, I agree wholeheartedly with. It's all this connection to this divine consciousness that we're all a part of, that we're all one with, and that we have access to. Like you get an idea or a download, and that's why you create that widget. It's Mm -hmm. why you go that direction, whatever it may be. And some people are more in tune consciously with it than others are, but I think as you mature in life, it becomes more and more, we become more and more conscious of it. So I think we can actually draw a conclusion here that kind of takes us a step further than we've been at before. Because in the past, and we've had many guests, you've said this, David has said this, other people who are channelers have, have said the same kind of thing. They basically all say, anyone can be a channel. Mm-hmm. Anyone can channel. I think we've taken one step further and we've said, everyone does channel. Yeah. Which Absolutely. is a different, that's a different kettle of fish right there. Absolutely. That, that's not something that has to be learned. That's something we're already doing. Yeah. I think it's built into us. Like, I mean, if you start to, to, to break it down on the like science side, perhaps we'll call it science. Um, if we are all connected at, to source and we're all connected to one another, then it's already built in mm-hmm. to have this, information highway, if you will, open and available to you, you're already receiving stuff. We receive stuff. I talk about this lots with um, horses. You know, they don't smell fear. It's their receptor sites, energy receptor sites in their guts, which Mm. we have the same thing. So you meet Mm. somebody, whether it's in person or online or whatever, you're immediately sensing their energy, um, Whether you know it or you don't know it, your body is reacting. You have that channel open. You're channeling that information and you just have to listen more. (laughs) So anytime that you meet somebody, you meet a new business partner or a potential business partner of some kind, you you meet a new employer, you meet a a teacher, you meet a a romantic partner, you meet a friend or a new friend. You're at Starbucks. Yeah, you're at Starbucks. Yeah, I mean, all of, yeah. in any of these situations, you can get 
what we're calling a download, what some people just call a feeling, uh, what, what we sometimes call an intuition. They're all the same thing, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think that intuition and maybe channeling, there could be some, some slight differences. You know, when I channel, I'm channeling certain beings that I've connected with, that I set up a process to have them come into my working room and then have a conversation with them. So I know who it is. Um, whereas intuition is me kind of interacting with that field with my higher self and, and all the information that's being presented. But I mean, it's, it's all one. So that kind of tells me that more people are likely to be intuitors than channelers. Yeah. Because they don't bother to actually set up relationships with particular beings. You know, they're just yeah. connect to the field and see what you get. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. They're just kind of like open. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. So if that's our normal, and by our, I mean the human race as a whole right across the board, if that's our normal way of, well, I can't call it channeling because we just distinguished it from channeling. If, it, if intuiting is our normal way of connecting, let's put it that way. Yeah. If it's our normal way of connecting to source energy and, and or you know, whatever you want to call it, God, I don't care. Um, if that's our normal way of doing it, then what is really happening right now across the globe is more and more people are learning how to intuit. Yeah. Right? And, and to do it more regularly, more frequently. Mm-hmm. And to process the information and react, I don't know if react's the right word, but process it and then do something with respond. it. Respond? After respond, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, because yeah. your response is what, what drives the whole train anyway. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's the thing is that we're receiving this information all the time, but often we're ignoring it. Mm. We're ignoring, you know, that there, you know, that person in the Starbucks line kind of made you feel funny. Or, yeah. You know, that. Well, we don't have any other good explanations for that. That's right. We can't see anything. There's nothing tangible right. that we're, we're, we're seeing with our eyes or feeling with our hands or tasting or whatever. That'd be kind of weird in a Starbucks line. <laughs> <laughs> like Can somebody I taste you, please? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? But we don't have an explanation for, for why it is. Yeah. Um, and it's really just trusting that it doesn't matter. Like, it doesn't matter why there is no explanation, you know, whatever. There is a story. Um, I can't remember where they were watching something on TV, Nate and I, or he read something to me. But there was this, this uh, two sisters, they were helping out with their family antique store. And this man came in and he was kind of weird and gave them both like a grungy vibe. And they were all like, uh, you know, and he was like, I want this armor and I'll come back at 1030. And he was kind of pushy and, you know, whatever. They considered it and were like, sorry, we have plans. Well, I come back tomorrow morning. It was always like outside of hours. And and they they said, no, I, like, absolutely not. They just kind of got fed up with him and, and said enough. And then I think he came back the next day at the end of the day. And the sister felt Oh, he was parked outside when they left. That's what it was. And so the sister was like, oh, yeah, I'll give you a ride home to the other sister, even though the other sister had her car there and everything. Um, and he was offering to go for coffee with them or something. Mm -hmm. And so they leave. And then a year later or something like that, they see his face all over TV. And I can't. It was Jeffrey Dahmer. Oh, gee. Well, okay. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, we hear about those crazy stories, um, but the opposite is also true. Like you meet somebody and you're just like, wow, I love this person. Like I want to spend more time with them. I want to, mm -hmm. you know, what, whatever. I want to get to know them. And then they're your, maybe your next client or they lead you to your forever person or, you mm -hmm. know, just something beautiful opens up. Um, I think acknowledging these things that we're intuitively feeling is powerful. It's powerful, and apparently, it's also survival driven. Yes, Absolutely. not just survival driven, and it's also thrive driven. Absolutely, yeah. Right. So, uh, basically, to take what we're talking about in the last ten minutes or so, it comes down to this: whenever we're getting an intuition, we if we can take a moment to decide does this feel good to us or not, that's going to give us the indication of whether to follow through with it. 
Yeah. If it does feel good, then we can follow through knowing that we've gotten something that is, that actually is real, even if we don't know what it is or where it came from or how it got generated, and it's worth following up. And if it doesn't feel good, we know, okay, that's a good signal to walk the other direction. Yeah. That, that That's clean cut. You don't get that much that's clean cut like that. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. And the more of us that learn that, the more happy lives we're going to have. Oh yeah. You think about the ripple effect of, of energy of just receiving those, that information from the field of knowledge, mm -hmm. you know, how much, how much is open to us, how we can inspire people just by following that feeling. You see somebody on the street and you're just drawn to them in some way and you just simply yeah. smile that yeah. maybe saved their life or made their day. And yeah, now no. they become this you know, whatever rock star or do something brilliant in their life because of this pivotal moment that you just followed your intuition. Yeah. yeah. And plus it's also going to work out for yourself too, in ways that you don't necessarily know. In fact, yeah. you probably don't know. You have to kind of yeah. wait to see how it plays And you may it. never know. It's you like know. the way that you end the show every single yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. Yes. And then, well, we don't have a guest today, but we can still end it that way. It's not, true. It's not like there's a rule that says we have to have a guest in order to do that. <laughs> <laughs> we can just love on all the people listening. Yeah. Well, yeah. all right. Let's do it that way. I love that. Yeah. Because that's that's something we haven't given credit to. The listeners of not just this podcast, but any podcast where, you're, where there's this kind of growth going on, are they're giving energy just by listening. Mm -hmm. And that mm -hmm. energy... It, it's helping people in ways that they don't know about. They can't see, they can't feel, but it is helping. That's a really great point. It's, it's a good reminder. Yeah, listeners, you you deserve credit too. You're yeah. part of this picture. You're part of this process. And just by listening, you are putting out to the world energy that helps the world. Yeah. That's that's a really cool concept. I like that. Yeah, it's profound. <laughs> I mean, I'm sad we didn't have our guest today. Her name was Deshama yeah. Gordon, and we'll, we'll get it back at some point. Uh, but this is worthwhile. Yeah, this so good. good. Look, 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 we, we started with creativity. We turned it into a conversation about channeling and intuition, and yeah. we tied it back to the entire world being intuitive channelers. Yeah. And, that, changing that, the world just by listening. and changing the world just by listening. Yeah, right. I mean, come on. It doesn't get much better than that. No. Truly wow. is your daily dose of happy. Yeah, <laughs> once again, another one in the corner. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Put it in the can. Publish it. We're done. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Joey Lynn, I know you got to get going. I got to get going too. But thank you so much for such a wonderful conversation. I look forward to talking with you next week. I don't remember who our guest is, but we do have a guest schedule. So yeah, we'll, we'll go back mm -hmm. to doing the guest thing. But this time we got to do a you and me thing. Yeah, it was awesome. Thanks for having me. And I thank can't you. wait to have another conversation next week. It's going to be a good one, whatever it is. We just don't know what it is yet. That's right. So thank you much. Thank you to podcast listeners everywhere. We will see you all next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.